Good day, everyone. Welcome to the Basketball Podcast of Mid-America. I am your host, Anthony Christensen, joined by the esteemed Bob Holt of the Democrat Gazette and the acclaimed Blake Sutton behind the scenes. Thank you all for tuning in. Gentlemen, how are we doing today, Bob? Doing good. Kind of crappy weather. <laughs> We'd been so nice, warm and sunny, and today kind of dank and rainy, And but at least it's not snowing or ice or anything. That, yeah. I, I, for one, am enjoying the weather because all the pollen for not having rain for so long, my sinuses have just been wrecked for like two weeks. So I welcome the rain. <laughs> well, we need rain, obviously, to help the plants grow and the trees grow and the the farmers need it. So I'm not anti-rain or anything. It's just not a great, <laughs> great day to be walking around. So no more rain. Um, all right, so let's talk some hope. Uh, the Arkansas men's basketball team had probably its best stretch, um, at least over, the, over 80 minutes over the past couple of games, losing 111 to 102 to Kentucky on Saturday, and then beating LSU 94 to 83 on Wednesday to close out their home schedule. Maybe, maybe, just enough to keep an NIT bid alive, especially kind of with how the new format overwhelmingly favors the Power Conference teams. Um, which I'm not a fan of, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Uh, <laughs> um, the Razorbacks offense is clicking in a way that it hasn't really all season, or at least since you know my limited time on the beat has started. Uh, Caliph Battle, I believe he has 147 points over the past four games, which is the most of any SEC player over the past 20 seasons. Um, and we've talked a decent amount about his you know scoring outburst over you know, the course of our last episodes, especially, you know, a lot of, a lot of writing about it, obviously, Bob and I both being writers. Um, but, you know, you can't not talk about it again with how well he's been playing. You know, Bob, have you seen, have you ever seen a player, you know, play this well over a stretch like this? And how impressive, how impressive has it been for you to see? Well, certainly from an offensive standpoint, you know, he does remind me a lot of Mason Jones, who they had both, well, I guess they're the only two Razorbacks to score 30 or more points in three straight games when, you know, Mason uh, was on Eric Musselman's first team. He and Isaiah Joe were really the main guys, and Isaiah got hurt, hurt his knee, missed about, I don't know, six or seven games. And Mason was playing well anyway, but then he really took over offensively because they didn't have Isaiah. And uh, he would just drive downhill like, you know, like nobody's business. And he, I think he, had, I think he led the nation in free throw attempts. I, I don't think he shot quite as well as Caleb has of late. I think Caleb is uh, – 58 of 63. It's like he, he, yeah, I mean, he's a good career, you know, free throw shooter, 80 something percent, but not, I think that's 92 or 93. But yeah, very reminiscent of what Mason did. Mason was a co SEC player of the year that year. Just, and I think he's, last time I looked anyway, he was with the Kings. He's been playing in the G League and getting some NBA time here and there. But yeah, it's very impressive. And, and you know, it's just amazing he's doing it with, with the number of shots he is. I, I think he scored, um, like last week, I think it's actually 141 points, and I think he's taken like. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I added all this up and wrote it down. I can't find it, but he's doing about 15 shots a game or something. Like last night, I think he was eight of 16, and uh, he scored uh, 29 points. And he was, I don't know how, but he missed a free throw. I think he was uh, nine of 10. And if he'd hit that free throw, he would have had 30 again. And I asked, you know, he uh, LSU hit some free throws with 10 seconds left, and Arkansas got the ball back. And, of course, you know, they're up by 11. So at that point, probably not very classy to try to go in and score. But but, but KB had had the ball. And I remember thinking, man, he had just – or even the, the, the uh, possession before that, I thought – and this was – he had 27. They, then they fouled him, and he got two more free throws. But I thought, oh, man, he's going to jack up a three, you know. <laughs> but he's really – I mean, he's he, – he, you know, he talked about last night how it didn't matter to him if he scored 30. He just wanted to win, and he really is playing winning basketball. I mean, he's getting the line, and he's knocking down the free throws and, uh, you know, just high volume free throws. I, I, like I said, I think it's 63 free throws in the last four games, so that's whatever 63 divided by four is. <laughs> Somebody's smarter than me, but he's getting the line about 15, you know, 14 times a game and knocking them all down and driving the ball and, you know, he's hit some threes, but it's not like he's dependent on that. And it's just super efficient, I guess, is the word that comes to mind. Is he's just he's not having to, uh, you know, he's getting the shots and the flow of the game. He's not forcing things. You know, it's funny he scored thirty four Kentucky, 
and he didn't have any points uh, uh, until 1040 left in the first half. He'd missed his first shot, so he's not getting shots, but he wasn't forcing things. He wasn't hunting shots, as Eric likes to say. Just just been super efficient. I think his teammates are enjoying it. They want to get him the ball. They, they know, hey, get him the ball and get out of the way. You know, and, so, and he's scoring on fast breaks, and he's also getting rebounds and getting some assists. And still, he had three block shots last game. I think that he had eight blocks or something all season. But uh, So he's really doing it on both ends of the floor. Yeah, and you touched on it there kind of at the end. His, you know, his defense hasn't been talked about a lot, but three blocks last night, I believe it was eight blocks for – you know, the whole of his career <laughs> um, coming into that game. But can you just talk about, you know, his defensive progression, especially kind of in the, these recent games and how impressive that's been and how important that's been for, you know, Arkansas to have you know, some better showings? Yeah, because obviously he's scoring at a high clip, and that's what we all write about, and that's what everybody talks about on the TV commentators and all that on the SC Network or whatever. But it's really his defense – that has gotten him the playing time to where he can do this. If you think about it, before he was, you know, scoring 29 and 42 and 36 and 34, uh, you know, he'd had a stretch where he wasn't playing much at all and including not playing at all when Arkansas beat A&M here. And then um, Eric went with a, a four-guard lineup at Mississippi State because, you know, Trevor Brazil was still out and um, – I'm trying to remember what Jalen Graham was out. He'd hurt his shoulder. And so they, they Eric went small and he, and he put KB in there. And KB had a really good game. You know, Arkansas played well, was actually leading uh, like in the final minute, uh, but couldn't quite uh, pull it out. And But that was actually, they played very well. And, and Battle played well. He had 18 points, 30 something minutes, you know, efficient. And also, I think he played pretty good defense. They held Mississippi State at their place to 71 points. And so then that earned him more minutes at A&M, and then obviously he took off scoring-wise. But, you know, if he hadn't been playing defense like Eric wanted him to, he wouldn't have gotten those minutes to score all those points. And Eric's talked a couple times about how he's really bought into the defensive concepts. He's understanding things. Like I said, we talked about the block shots. He's getting steals. Um, you know, he's just he's playing – you know, really a complete game. And it's funny, we asked him about the block shots last night. Uh, somebody did, I can't remember. And he said that he knows people talk about his defense. By that he meant that he does not a good defensive player. But he basically said, I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically said he's a better defensive player than people give him credit for, and he takes pride in being an all-around player. And really, if you look at the rebounding, the scoring, obviously, the block shots, the assists, he really is uh, filling off the box score in, in all categories. Yeah, and we can talk about Caliph Battle the entire episode if we really wanted to, but probably not the best use of our time. So just kind of looking back at, you know, the last time Arkansas played LSU, Will Baker went crazy, 25 points on 9 of 11 shooting from the field. Last night he had three points on one field goal. I think he went one of four from the field. Obviously keeping him in check was a big priority for, you know, Eric Musselman in Arkansas. You can just talk a little bit about what you liked defensively from Arkansas last night and whether you think that's kind of sustainable, you know, going into the Al the Alabama game and the SEC tournament where they're going to see, obviously, somebody like Grant Nelson or somebody like that at Alabama or you know, whoever they're going to see in the, the SEC tournament. Yeah, and of course they're going to see Grant Nelson on Saturday yeah. in Tuscaloosa. But, yeah, Eric talked about how, you know, they, they obviously in a rematch they, you know, change some things up when you get beat by 95 to 74. And I think Arkansas scored the last seven points, so that wasn't even as, as bad as 21. I think they were down by 28 late in the game. And, uh, yeah, and, and Baker's a good player. He's average at 11 points, you know, big guy, nice shoot and touch. But, yeah, he just got going in that game. He was setting high screens and then popping out to the three, and they weren't getting out on him. Hit four or five threes. And, Really, he had a, a run there where they jumped out on Arkansas in the first half, 30 to 14 or something. And really, they just didn't control the rest of the way. So they made, uh, you know, controlling uh, uh, Baker a, a big uh, defensive point. And I don't know if, if you would told Eric they'd hold him to three. <laughs> he would have loved that. But, yeah, I think they did a much better job of getting out on him on the perimeter and, uh, you know, limiting his shots. Uh and, uh, you know, Makai Mitchell and, and Chandler Lawson were kind of the two different bigs that I think had a good hand in that. And they, they, they did some double teams. And, you know, you could tell he was getting kind of frustrated. And so that, that was really a big adjustment they made. You always make adjustments when you play somebody the second time around, especially when they beat you that bad. But I think that was probably the number one adjustment they made was they, they kept Will uh, Baker in check and didn't let him go crazy. And 
of course, you know, Jordan Wright, who I think was like 0 for 6 or 1 for 6 or something the first game, he didn't have a – although he hit some free throws, I think he had 13 points. He had a big game last night, 24, but I, I think, you know, limiting Baker was, was really a big key to that game. Mm-hmm. And then offensively, again, you look at, you know, Arkansas's ball movement, 18 assists last night, if I'm not mistaken. You know, it's been a lot better, you know, in these past couple of games than it has been in the past. You know, can you just talk a little bit about what you see in the passing game and that kind of offensive display from recent games? Yeah, Eric, I think he uses the term, the ball was popping. That means they were moving it around. You know, there's been games where, I don't you know, different players, but guys just out there dribble, 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 dribble. Eric, I remember several weeks ago talked about how in practice they were running a drill, or maybe it was Jalen Graham that mentioned it, where you had to get rid of the ball like within a second or something. Well, that's probably not going to happen in a game that often. But, yeah, they did seem like they had crisp movement. Again, battle, you know, they'd pass to him, and he'd have a shot. He'd have a chance to jack up a, a perimeter shot, but he was, you know, moving the ball too, I think. Uh, Tremont Mark played some point. He and L. Ellis kind of alternated as point guards. And, of course, Tremont, you think of him more as a scorer because he's averaging 17 points, but he can uh, facilitate as well. He had five assists and didn't, you know, I think he was two for eight, so he wasn't having a great shooting game. Obviously, Battle was playing well. Ellis, they were getting the ball inside to Makai. Um, and so, uh, you know, Mark did, a, I thought he played a real good floor game. Um, and L. Ellis had four assists, so that was good. Two, two, the nine assists between those two guys. And the, yeah, they, they just uh, Eric. A big thing is they want two hundred plus passes a game. A lot of times they'll say we had two hundred thirty three passes, or we only had one hundred and seventy two passes. I don't, I don't know what they had last night. I'm not going to go back and count it, but, <laughs> but I bet it was two hundred plus on, on that plus side. He wants, and yeah, the, I think eight, eighteen assists on thirty made baskets. That's obviously an excellent ratio. And I always think. I don't know if they'll ever change this rule, but if you make a pass to a guy and he has a good look and he gets fouled and then he hits free throws, I think the guy that made that pass, the guy on the line, should get an assist. But they'll probably never listen to me. But um, <laughs> yeah, they, they did a good job with that. They just moved the ball well. They got a lot of fast breaks uh, because LSU, you know, they, they blocked. Eric brought this up. You know, Arkansas blocked ten shots. LSU didn't block any. That, that's obviously ten zero on that and. That's not something you see every day. So Arkansas did, you know, a good job of of altering shots and blocking them. And LSU did score a lot inside. It seems like you know they they hit a lot of layups for sure, but um, they didn't really get going from three. Like I think they hit twelve of twenty three threes in Baton Rouge, and last night was at four or fifteen or something like that. So they they definitely limited the damage from the three points. So the inside you don't want to give up layups, but I think you can live with that if you're not giving up a bunch of threes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then kind of moving back to, you know, Caleb Battle, um, obviously last night he kind of uh, hinted that he kind of hopes to or plans to or something, (laughs) Um, you know, coming back in regard to coming back for his final season of eligibility. You know, Eric Musselman didn't say that he had that conversation, but he seemed that he's open to having him back. Um, And then Caleb also tweeted a little bit ago just – asking people to stop asking him about it. Um, but with his comments last night, I think obviously, you know, if he does end up staying, um, how do you kind of think that kind of affects, you know, the off season, you know, look, looking forward? Well, I mean, I think that's a plus. You look at the way, you know, he started off like a house of fire. He was their sixth man. He was averaging, uh, you know, I think he scored uh, 20 plus points his first four games, 10 games in, he's averaging just under 17 Again, being very efficient. And then he went through a rough stretch where he, his shooting percentage was really bad. I mean, like bad, bad, like under 30%. And he was playing limited, you know, very few minutes, less than 10 minutes. Like I said, didn't play the AM game. And uh, you'd hear things like him and Eric were button heads in practice, which was very, was not hard to believe based on how he was playing. And you say, hey, so um, was 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 battle hurt? You know, he didn't play against him. Coach's decision. You know, he said that real forcefully, mm-hmm. kind of like he wanted you to know. Yeah, I didn't want to play the guy. And so now, whatever issues they were having seem to be have been resolved, and he's playing great. I mean, who would not want this guy on their team? So, and I just, I think I, you know, he, it's funny. He's listed as a senior. It's his fifth year. Um, but there's one of those seasons I think he only played a handful of games, so I guess you could count that as a red shirt. Mm-hmm. So he's got another year of eligibility, but he's a senior. That's what makes these senior nights to me so 
confusing because, <laughs> you know, you know, Devo Davis went through the senior thing. Of course, he's been here four years. He got another year of eligibility. I don't know if he wants to use it or what, but um, – and you know there were I'd definitely be other colleges interested in in KB if he wanted to transfer I think he'd have a shot to play pro ball whether that's here in the U S and you know try to make it with an NBA team or you know play overseas where you can obviously make some good money but I think I asked him well I know what it was I asked him some about the seniors and he deferred uh, to Jeremiah Denver saying well he's a senior you know I'll let him answer that. It was senior night, and then I said, "Well, you know, you're listed as a senior, but you've got a year left if you decide what you want to do." And he says, "So I'm a Razorback. I'm a Razorback. Um, I want to be here to the end." So I, you know, that wasn't definitive, signed a contract or something, but I took that to mean he's happy. Uh, he has good feelings about being here, and he wants he wants to come back. And we asked Eric about it, and I thought Eric gave a good answer. He talked about how much KB seems to be enjoying playing here. There, I was enjoying having him play here, but. That's a conversation for the end of the season, or not the end of the season, after the season. And, you know, he can make what decision he is because I, I don't doubt uh, KB's sincerity when he says that. But, you know, w- what if some opportunities present themselves where he could, you know, have it like a, be able to go overseas for a big contract? I'm just totally speculating here, but I'm just saying, I think what Eric said was, hey, you know, after the, he'll figure that out after the season. He'll make a decision. You know, right now they're focused on Alabama and the SEC tournament. But certainly that was a positive thing to hear for Arkansas fans because after a, a rough stretch, he's, he's playing lights out. Yeah, and with that, we're going to cut to a quick break. When we return, we're going to preview the Alabama game in the SEC tournament. And, of course, Blake's going to have another rendition of Stump the Bob, and you do not want to miss that. There's nothing you'd rather do than listen to Bob take home another win. (laughs) So make sure you stick with us. We'll be right back. Stay on top of all Arkansas Razorback sports with a Digital Plus subscription on the Hogs Illustrated app. Get complete Razorbacks coverage in one location. Your subscription gives you 20-plus issues of Hogs Illustrated magazine, the most unique and compelling coverage anywhere in the state, plus total access to all the content on wholehogsports.com including breaking news, commentaries, analysis, features, recruiting, award-winning photos, and premium message boards. Subscriptions start at just $17 per month. Join the Hog Sports Network team at subscribe.waco.com. That's subscribe.wehco.com. Or call 479-684-5509 to get your front row seat to Arkansas Razorback Sports. Go Hogs! And we're back. Thank you for sticking with us. Without further ado, Blake is going to bring us some Stump the Bob, please. The floor is yours. All right, Bob, you've been on a real hot streak lately. You haven't been stumped in a month. Uh, Your score right now, I believe, is 5-3. and Still have those two side points, but you haven't had to use them because you've been on a winning streak. Today's question is worth one point, but there will be opportunities for a few more side points if you get this one right. Or if you get it wrong, you can still you can still get the side points. Um, how many All Americans has Eric Musselman coached at Arkansas? Are we counting honorable mention All Americans? No. Okay. Hmm. Let me think. I don't know the answer, but I'm new here, so I think that's a that's a valid excuse. I think if Moses Moody got All American, I don't think I think he was honorable mention again. So you're talking first or second or third team? Yeah. Okay. JD Note was a second team All American, AP and Sporting News. So that's one. I don't think anybody last year, you know, he's had some really great players. I don't think any of those guys were All Americans. I don't think Isaiah was. I don't think. I don't think Mason was. I don't think Jalen Williams was. I'm going to go with one J.D. Note. You mentioned – it's actually three, but oh you, mentioned, you mentioned all of them. So Mason okay. Jones, Moses Moody, and J.D. Note. Okay, well, there you go. So do we consider that do we consider that a win since he mentioned all of them? Or the, is it like side points? Where yeah, you thinking? Um, yeah, so oh. you don't get the point for the number of correct – or the number of All Americans, but you do get two side points for naming Mason Jones and Moses Moody. Okay. Okay. All right. So you're going to use those side points now. Or you're going to you're going to hold them until <laughs> until we. What are we What are we thinking here? What's the strategy? Well, you're five and four. You're still positive, so you don't need to use them just yet. But 
next week is probably going to, since next week's uh, going to be the final episode of the season, I'll probably pull out like a real stumper. So you, mm. you'll, you probably want to hang on to those side points. Okay. All right. Well, stay semi-hot, I guess, since you did get one of them. <laughs> All right, but now kind of looking ahead to Saturday, Arkansas heads to 16th-ranked Alabama with Tennessee clinching the regular season title. The Crimson Tide can't win that, but they can still get the second seed and continue to boost their uh, their NCAA tournament standing, their ranking, and everything along those lines. Alabama, like Kentucky, has an explosive offense that can score with anybody. Um, Bob, what do you think the approach you know for a game like this should be? Should it be you know trying to get into a shootout like it was with Kentucky, or do you think Arkansas should try to have more of an a def- of a defensive approach? Or what do you what do you kind of think in there? Well, I guess hope wishful thinking. I want to see a shootout. I mean, I thought it was a really fun, entertaining game at Kentucky. I know Arkansas obviously wants to win, but um, you know, I think the way that Arkansas is playing on offense, and it, it's not like. I mean, obviously Arkansas wants to win, but really um, Arkansas is locked into playing that Wednesday game. We don't know which who they're going to play. They're going to play either Missouri or Vanderbilt. Um, but um, you know, they've 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 done well with the. They, they really got the fast break going. I think they had 20 fast break points against LSU. Got out in transition. Eric's talking about how hard guys are. Even the big guys are running hard to fill the lanes. It's it's a fun way to play. It's really the way Eric has wanted to play. Uh, most of his coaching career in college, and obviously in the NBA, you're getting up and down the court. So, I think I think Arkansas will go in there to to go at it offensively with uh, with Alabama. And if you t- and Alabama, I th- you know Kentucky scored 117 on them, so I don't think Alabama's an elite defensive team. And the Razorbacks have played better defense, but you know Vanderbilt scored 85 on them. So, I think you've got two offensive minded teams that have been scoring at a high clip and. Um, so I think it's going to be an up and down, exciting. If you if it was a two teams in the hundreds again, it would not shock me, mm-hmm. and I kind of hope that's what it happens. And I'm sure that's what ESPN would like. So yeah, I think it's <laughs> going to be a pretty free, free will and offensive shootout. I, I hope so anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Alabama's coming into this game, uh, you know, behind two back to back losses. You know, just kind of looking at it from the perspective of Arkansas, who has had you know some slow starts from time to time. How important do you think it is that they get on to you know, a good start and, you know, kind of avoid falling into a hole like they have, especially when you look back at, you know, the LSU game or the Tennessee game and stuff like that. What do you kind of, I guess, feel the – how important is the start? Yeah, I think it's ultra important because, uh, you know, Kentucky last week, I think Arkansas had their first six shots, really set a good tone offensively. Um, and when you look at the games where they've gotten brutalized pretty good, like at LSU, Auburn here – um, you know, at Florida, the, 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 a lot of those games, are kind of, at Ole Miss, you know, they lost by 20. A common thread is that they, they fell behind early and never – they're playing catch-up and don't do not don't do it. And they're, they're trailing – it's funny, you know, when Arkansas lost to LSU, I think LSU led for 37 minutes and 8 seconds. I think Arkansas led for 37, just under 38 minutes. So um, – yeah, I think it's imperative that Arkansas gets off to a good start and the players feel good about what they're doing. And in Alabama, obviously, they, they they don't fear anybody. And if they fall behind by 20, I'm sure they think they're going to catch up and hit a bunch of threes. But, um, you know, if Arkansas can get off to a good start, that takes the crowd out of it a little bit and, you know, has the players feeling good and feeling like they, they can pull an upset. And so, um, so yeah, I think that getting off to a good start on offensive end is really, really important. Mm-hmm. And then when you look at you know Alabama's roster, I mean, Mark Sears is a Cousy Award finalist. Aaron Estrada, one of the more fun players to watch, has beaten Arkansas before when he was at Hofstra. Um, Grant Nelson is someone who can stretch the floor, hit threes in that forward spot. You know, Alabama has no shortage of weapons. So when you look at it, you know, this Alabama team, what do you think kind of sticks out as the biggest strength that they have? Yeah, I just think Sears is an elite player. I think him and Dalton Connect are the top two candidates to be SEC player of the year. You, you you look at Sears and he's he scores, he's got a lot of assists, he gets a lot of steals, he gets to the free throw line. He really he really does it all. And if Dalton Connect hadn't come to the league, I think Sears would be a clear player of the year uh, guy. And probably because Tennessee – is one of the league they've already clinched it. Connect is probably going to be the player of the year. I, I know Bruce Pearl, the Auburn coach, said the other day. I think he was asked about Dawn Connect, 
and he just talked about how he, his uh, feeling is he usually votes for the player of the year. He usually votes for the best player on the best team. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but yeah, Sears is really, really good. He had a huge game against Arkansas last year when they won in Alabama, won the Walton Arena, and then Alabama beat them again in Tuscaloosa. Eric Milsman talked after the game last night about playing at Alabama again. I meant to look <laughs> this up, but there are these weird quirks in the schedule, and I make it even weirder when they had uh, Texas and OU, but um, like, like uh, Mississippi State's had to come to Fayetteville more and Arkansas has played at Starkville. There, there's some other teams like that. And Alabama's kind of one of those teams for Arkansas. They've had to go to Tuscaloosa a lot. And I think Alabama's one of the last three. The last time Arkansas beat them was in the the 20 uh, – I think it was might have been the 2021 season. Maybe it was 2022. But anyway, I, th LSU, I think Alabama's won, won three in a row. And two of those have been in Tuscaloosa. And now they got to play them in Tuscaloosa. So the, the last four meetings – Three will have been in Tuscaloosa, including Saturday's game. So I'm sure Eric's not, not thrilled about that. But uh, yeah, Alabama's—they're they're a fun, exciting team. You know, Nate Oates. I don't—I think he, there's mutual respect between he and Eric. I don't think there's a lot of love lost between those guys. And so it's very—I think it's very competitive uh, rivalry. And um, you know, Alabama's won the SEC regular season titles, a couple of them, but. And they got the Sweet 16 once, but Arkansas has really carried the SEC banner in, in the NCAA tournament the last three years, going to two lead eights in a Sweet 16. That, I mean, they're going to have to win the tournament in Nashville five games in five days, which obviously is mathematically possible. Realistically, I don't know. I mean, I guess there was a first time for everything. But, um, you know, but Arkansas has really been the, the marquee program from an NCAA tournament uh, uh, perspective. But, you know, Alabama's – uh, been probably the most consistent team in the regular season, along probably with Tennessee. So, um, but yeah, so I, I think yeah, Nate Oates and Eric, you know, they they, they want to get after each other. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I have an announcement to make. Um, I just did a little more research, and this is this is my fault. I, di I didn't do my due diligence on today's Stump the Bob. Mason Jones and Moses Moody were honorable mentions and so bob was right there there has only been one Ooh, what a <laughs> what a comeback <laughs> yeah i feel terrible i i, I appreciate your honesty yeah um yeah i had to go i had to go back and look that up but um but yeah so you got to, you said one and it was jd note and so you are you are correct so your record is now six not five and four it's six and three had to correct that. I had to. I, it was an emergency butt in for me. I had to. I had to correct that. I couldn't save it for the end of the show. That is that is a huge W right there. You're, you're picking up picking up form for the conference tournament. That's big. <laughs> that's good. I don't have to use my phone, a friend. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then speaking of the conference tournament, you mentioned it. Obviously, Arkansas is uh, guaranteed to be in that Wednesday game. We don't know who they're going to play yet, but Wednesday was locked in with Texas A&M beating Mississippi State last night. Um, right now it's looking like Vanderbilt's probably the most likely opponent. Um, but Bob, you're heading to Nashville. What are you, what are you most looking forward to for that Nashville trip? The basketball, the hot chicken, the nightlife. What are you, what are you most excited for with the SEC tournament? Well, at my age, I don't do a lot of nightlife, <laughs> but I do like the hot chicken. Although when I go there, I get the mild. I don't know if that <laughs> makes me a wimp or not, but yeah, the hot, the, 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 there's definitely good food in Nashville and that Wednesday night is an interesting deal because um, unless something's changed, the SEC, they do not charge people. So especially if you're a family, like, I don't know, let's say you have young kids and um, you don't want to lay out, you know, 200 bucks for tickets because they may get restless and want to leave after five minutes or get bored or whatever. To me, that that's a, it's, it's a great thing because – um, let's face it, these aren't exactly marquee matchups, right? We're talking about the bottom four teams in the conference – and um, including academic giant Missouri, which is still <laughs> try, trying to avoid going 0 and 18. Although I would not want to play Missouri there because, you know, they'd be just like those guys to knock somebody off if they, <laughs> if they would go 0 and 18 in the league or, or 1 and 17 or whatever. I think they play it at, at uh, LSU. So I don't, I don't think they're going to win. I think that'll be a good bounce back win for LSU. But, you know, so, so they let people in. And so, you know, that, that's going to give you a better crowd. I mean, you could be sitting there getting off work in downtown Nashville and talking to your buddy and saying, hey, let's go over and watch the games. You know, because you don't, I mean, you go there and you've got to buy beer or hot dogs or whatever, but, and it, it gets good crowd. I think it, it's good for those teams. So whoever came up with that idea, I think that's a great idea. The SEC already, 
you know, prints its own money. So um, I think you're getting people in there, and it's helping the atmosphere, and it's helping the crowd. So anybody out there listening who's going to be in Nashville Wednesday night, man, <laughs> free basketball. And so, um, I, but but uh, I'm trying to remember what, what your original question. Oh, what am I looking forward <laughs> to? Yeah, so I'm looking forward to those games and, you know, good atmosphere. And, um, you know, one thing they do, they, they've been doing this SEC Legends deal for about 20 years. And it's kind of funny because a lot of the Legends never played in the SEC because obviously – with all the league uh, changeover, you know, Arkansas has got a bunch of great players from the Southwest Conference Day. So it's kind of funny when somebody like Daryl Walker or Joe Klein, who were great players in the Southwest Conference, are SEC legends. But, you know, this year it's Derek Hood, who was an SEC player, and I think he's a very underrated player, uh, great uh, rebounder and, you know, good score, really good guy. He, he's a, a teacher down in Texas now at a middle school. So he's going to be Arkansas's SEC legend. They always introduce the legends – and honor them at halftime of that of their school's first game because, you know, somebody's going to lose that game. <laughs> so <laughs> so they're going to honor – I can't remember who, like, some of the other legends are. Well, I mean, like, uh, but Tubby Smith's Kentucky's legend this year. That, that's pretty cool. He led him to a national championship in 1998, his first year replacing Rick Pitino. And Cliff Ellis, the old Auburn coach, is Auburn's legend. And there's some other guys. Yeah, that, that's cool. So if you're an Arkansas fan, you're a national man, you can go see him play for free on Wednesday – you know, uh, cheer on, uh, recognize Derek Hood, and, you know, ha have a good time. Yeah, and then just kind of looking at the SEC tournament, obviously winning is the goal. That's why you play the games. Um, but what do you think, you know, outside of that should be the big, you know, goal or I guess the main objective, you know, for those games? Do you think it's, you know, trying to look at things that might work for next season, developing players who might be, you know, in the picture for next season? What do you kind of want to see from Arkansas and Nashville? Yeah, I just think they got to try to to win that first game, and then that that can lead on to something else. As far as next year, there's going to be so much turnover. I don't really know if that's even relevant, to be honest. It, it, things have changed so much. I, I remember when, when Arkansas went to the NIT in ni 1997, that they'd had a run of you know NCAA tournament appearances and Sweet 16s, national titles, Final Fours. But they had uh, Derek Hood, the aforementioned Derek Hood, Pat Bradley, Kareem Reed, you know, great trio of players. You know, Pat was the shooter, and Kareem had a lot of assists, and he could score, and Derek was a rebounding machine. He could score. Those guys were all sophomores, and they had some other young players. So that was a really good uh, situation for them to get extra practices, extra games for the future and because they all had two more years left. Um, with this team, I, I – we talked a little bit about battle, but who knows? I just don't think you worry about next year. I think you Arkansas. This is your one shot to go to the NCAA tournament, and as crazy as it sounds, I cover Arkansas is as great as our basketball program has been, and they won a lot of Southwest Conference tournament titles uh, down in Dallas uh, under it. You know, Nolan Richardson really owned that tournament at the end. Arkansas has only won in thirty. Uh, Something years, I think 32 years in the SEC, they won one title, tournament title. And that was 2000, and they had to win that year. I think they were 15 and 14 going into the tournament. 7-9 and nine in the SEC, they had to win the tournament to go to the NCAA tournament. And nothing short of that would help them. And they had to win four games in four days. And I think, and I think I got this right. Maybe this could be, maybe you could ask me this. But I think they knocked off Georgia. Then the big game, they upset Kentucky in the second round. And then they knocked off a really good LSU team, and they knocked off Auburn. Uh, outside of Georgia, all those were NCAA tournament teams, and Arkansas was an underdog in all of them. They had not won back-to-back -back SEC games all year, I don't believe. They they sure had not. I don't. Or they, you know, maybe they had won three in a row. They, they sure had not won four, <laughs> four in four days, and so that that was a great run. And so obviously. Uh, I mean, nobody saw that coming. I mean, Nolan Richardson's a Hall of Fame coach. He's in, I don't know, 15 Hall of Fames, and then the big one, the Naismith Hall of Fame. But nobody could have expected Arkansas after the struggles they'd had. Like I said, they were 15 and 14. Well, right now Arkansas is 15 and 15. They're going to go in either 16 and 15 or 15 and 16, depending on what happens in Tuscaloosa. So, um, but that extra, I mean, man, having to play on Wednesday, that that's tough. I, I will say this. I think a lot of times, or, or sometimes, Teams that play on Wednesday have an advantage against those Thursday teams because they've, they've already played and they've won. Or if you play Thursday and win, maybe you have an advantage against those teams with double buys on Friday. The problem is when if you win a couple 
and you're playing that third game, it's really hard to have your legs. Um, that happened to Arkansas the year the, the uh, tournament was in St. Louis. I think it was 2017, but Ar- Arkansas finally beat Florida in the, in the quarters. That had been a big um, uh, albatross around their neck trying to beat the Gators, and they beat them in a really exciting, great game. Then they had to play Tennessee, a well-rested Tennessee game in the semis, and you just tell they ran out of gas. So, you know, I think Arkansas can go there and certainly win on Wednesday night, maybe win on Thursday, but if they get to Friday, they're playing the third game in three days against a team that's had a double bye, that's going to be really tough. And that is all of the time we have. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. From myself, Anthony Christensen, Bob Holt, and Blake Sutton behind the scenes. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you're watching all these conference tournaments that are going on. It's a lot of fun. We'll see you guys next time.